I'm a thinker, observer, the baddest man you ever heard of. All right, everyone, welcome back to the 2020 Vision Podcast. I'm excited for this episode. It's been a little minute. I'm sorry, y'all. I've been on vacation and enjoying some free time. So we are back on it with episode 10. And this is special because I have one of my very longtime friends we met during COVID, um, went through college together and been in a lot of familiar spaces. So how are you today, Miss Reed? Hi, I'm good. All right. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, we'll get right into the topic. Hi, my name is Hyla Reed and I am from Phoenix, Arizona. Awesome. So thank you, Hyla, for hopping on the episode today. Um, today we're talking about self-love and, you know, having the capacity to love yourself before, you know, different uh, areas of your life and also just making sure that you are taking care of yourself. We've talked about this on previous episodes and different types of uh, ranges of topics. And so I think when we talk about loving yourself, you know, you have to talk about like within. So there's a lot of people, you know, there's a psychological method that people talk about when you look in in the mirror, you're looking at yourself and, you know, some people are like, oh, I like what I see. You know, I don't like what I see. There are certain things I want to change, Um, you know, that old historical, you know, kind of perspective of this is how God made me. You know, this is the image that he made me in. And I think a lot of people get wrapped up in that too much when they're thinking about it, you know, I wake up every day and look myself in the mirror. And I used to have that mindset of, you know, I wish there's some things that could be better. I wish there are some things that I could change. Um, There are a lot of people who change things about themselves and, you know, about the way that they love themselves, which sometimes can harm, you know, their mindset and how they think about life. I think that, you know, if you're going about saying like, I'm gonna change this, I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna change, you know, something on my body. I'm gonna change something about, you know, my hair, something about the way I dress. But I think it's important to say, like, don't do it based on other people's validation and what, you know, other people expect of you. Um, I think you should definitely do it on your own accord. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with changing yourself for the better. I just don't think adding all of the extra stuff, you know, trying to, like, please other people or even, you know, please yourself in different ways. Like, it's okay if you want to, you know, better yourself in some way, you know, be better in a growth area or you know in mentally physically spiritually but making sure that you have that pure love for yourself you know every single day just to start out because if you don't you know that famous statement where they say if you don't love yourself you know then nobody will like that is something that i truly stand by and live by so to start out highly describe in a little bit of way to you what does loving yourself mean um how would you categorize that you know in terms of importance of your life specifically and how you would give other people advice you know how to love themselves purely when you know day to day in the world just just let it be (laughs) um i would prioritize it as i would say top priority because in the long run that affects mental health and your self-image because when you look at yourself, you have to be able to get to the point where you're looking at yourself, but not seeking validation from others. Like if you could look at yourself and be like, oh yeah, I look good today, I feel good today. Then you kind of put yourself in this head space where when you go outside into life, you're not looking for somebody to tell you like, oh, I look good for you to be like, okay, I'm gonna have a good day today. Like it starts with yourself. Cause when you wake up and you go to sleep, you look, you, the last thing you are with in the day and out the day is yourself. Like your mind, your your head space and, where, and how you are, you know? So I feel like it's very, very important because that, how you see yourself will affect how you interact with people, your relationships, because I know me personally, I have moments where like, I'll get in my face and I'm like, dang, I'm about to be around this person. How should I dress? I'm about to go around this person. But it's like, you can't necessarily think like that sometimes because how can you put yourself in somebody else's head space and just assume what they gonna think about you if you never met them, you don't know them, or even then you don't know what they thinking about. So you kind of have to learn just to kind of be comfortable with how you see yourself and what you think and your instincts and your gut. Yeah, and you know, it's it's important for in all of you watching, I think, you have to sit back and realize that many people that you meet like day to day are not really worried about what you're doing. Like, it, I think a lot of people focus too much on what other people are thinking and other perceptions of themselves that they kind of like forget what the main goal is. And that's, you know, to focus on you. Like I've had people, you know, in high school, in middle school, even in college that have come to me saying like, 
you know, oh, I have a problem with this person. I have a problem with how this person's thinking. I have a problem with what this person's saying or thinking about me. I'm like, well, half the time, that person's probably not even worried about you, to be honest. Like, I get that sometimes it can be intimidating for people who, you know, are staring into the world as a perception of themselves and saying, like, this person is, you know, looking at me a certain way. This person is thinking about me a certain way. But that's your personal perception. And I, I have to go from like a psychological perspective of that because the way we view ourselves in the world is not how others are viewing us. And I think sometimes it gets intimidating when you're looking at other people and they're looking at you a certain way, but you can't read their mind. Like it's as simple as that. You can't read what they're thinking. You can't read their mind. You can't, you know, understand what exactly they're thinking about. And that's, you know, the true reality of life and i think it works that way with other people also is that when they look at you they can't read your mind they can't see what you're thinking so they're not as worried as you know how others are towards them as you are and so for a lot of my people who feel like you know if i look at somebody or if i look at a situation or i look at you know this kind of perspective it's like oh it's you know bothering me take away from the fact that that's, that stuff doesn't matter. You have to understand that, you know, the stuff that you are most worried about, it honestly does not matter. What, what, what matters is that you have to understand as a person, as an individual, as a human in today's society, you have a goal in this life. You have a purpose. If you haven't found it yet, you, you know, you were searching for a purpose and what you're doing with that purpose doesn't have to mix with other people's opinions. You know, there's people every day that are like, you know, I'm only doing this for other people. I'm only doing this for other people's validation. I'm only doing this because, you know, this person thinks it's cool or this person thinks, you know, that it, it validates somehow to their opinion. That doesn't matter. Like I've said time and time again on previous episodes, like do stuff for your purpose only. Do stuff to make sure um, that you are doing it, you know, for your health, for your um, securedness, your career field, whatever, you know, drives you every single day. So going into that, Isla, how do you feel, you know, people like personally can love themselves better because i feel like there's a lack of self-love in society today alone especially with our generation because i was talking about this on a previous episode with the curse of social media and you know allowing yourself to see things that may be shinier seeing people you know that may be living a, a life that you know people i guess visualize as a fantasy or even um, want to or you even have people who see celebrities and i hate this so much but compare themselves to celebrities you know what they think they have or you know the mindset that they think they have so how how do you think people can love themselves more in the purity and also stop comparing themselves to things that you know they see like online or social media or just even in other people's lives and start to actually enjoy the stuff that they have it's so crazy because i literally was having this conversation yesterday with my dad my mom and my best friend <laughs> um I what I can say personally is that like I'm not gonna lie I have my moments where I'm looking at people through social media and I'm like dang where they getting the money from to do all this like, she, like what y'all doing let me get on with let me get on with y'all go because I like I want to be outside on these boats or going across the country doing all this stuff but at the same time after talking to mom and my dad and getting like my best friend's perspective and everybody's perspective you have to realize that it sounds cliche and repetitive, but being for real, like their life is not your life. And social media is really nothing but what people want you to see. You literally choose what you post on your story. Like I literally will look up, look at a picture and be like, mm, I'm not gonna post this on my story because I don't like how it look, but I like this one. Like you literally get to pick and choose what people see. So you have to literally take that and apply that to any time you kind of get into that mindset. Like you have to look at all these famous people. They literally take, they literally will have days where they literally just take pictures and do content to post. Like, literally for the reason to post. They probably didn't even really do nothing for real. Like, they could have did a whole setup of a background. It's like setting up a photo shoot. Like, social media literally only displays what the way they want everybody else to see. So, I feel like in terms of self-loving yourself through social media and stuff like that, you kind of have to adjust your mindset to literally think like that when you're looking at social media. Like, oh, that's cute and all. And yeah, I would love to do that, but at the same time, you got to think, this is a temporary snippet of their life and of this moment, you know? Like, you don't know what things look like outside that 30 seconds or outside that minute you're looking at on social media. So I feel like when it comes to personal love and trying to, like, love yourself, it starts with, first and foremost, you got to start holding on to a lot of the positive things you're like. Like, whether that be a small comment of somebody saying you look pretty today, you got a nice smile, I like how you did your hair today. You got to hold on to those and make you kind of have to force yourself to, like, make those hormone weights in the negative comments. Because I've realized that at least me in high school, I was the type to be like, I can get three 
positive comments throughout the day. Somebody, the mom tell me, oh, you look so cute today. I'm thinking like, you know, it's my mom. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, she told me all this stuff this morning about how much she loves me and what I should love about myself. But then I go to school and hear one BS comment, like somebody like, hey, why you got that on today? You the only person that wears something like that. Those are some homeless looking pants, you know? And I'm like, that really holds so much. And I'm thinking about that all day. But I'm like, but then when you realize it's like, dang, that one comment over the four, three nice comments you got. you. So it's just kind of like you have to learn how to manipulate your mind, if that makes sense. Because your mind, it could be your biggest fan, but also could be like your biggest letdown and really make you feel like you ain't BS or, you know, bull or, you know, S-I-H-T. I know how to spell. But you kind of have to, it's it's. It's as repetitive as it sounds, it's a mind game. Like your mind holds so much when it comes to your journey of self love, when it comes to so much, because you, I know me personally, I'll have moments where somebody can give me a compliment, but in the back of my head, my mind starts keeping up like, don't let this go to your head. Don't let this go to your head. Cause you know, you still got this from what you still got this from what you still got this from with you. And I have to come back at myself like, dang, how I'm gonna self sabotage myself and other people trying to uplift me. So I had to get into the habit of, okay, I love, you know, Give yourself a pat on the back for doing this, this, and this. Somebody else may be doing this, this, and this, but at the same time, you're doing this. So I had to learn to give myself pats on the back and for like the small accomplishments that I did throughout the day, like, or like just like throughout my life. You have to be like, yo, you have to kind of force yourself to be your biggest fan, if that makes sense. It's yeah. it's hard when you first start out because you literally it gets so easy to kind of negate yourself. Because I know me, I'll think of it as like I'm not self sabotaging myself. I'm keeping myself humble. But at the same time, it's different between it's different between like being humble and saying, "Okay, you did this. Okay, cool. Now go do this. Do something better." I'm like, I it's like self sabotage. It's like there's a fine fine line. If this makes sense, I'm gonna try to explain as best as I can. The fine line I'm talking about is like being humble is like somebody tell you something you're like, "Thank you." You take it. You take it. And you're like, "Yeah, I know. I appreciate it." But now I'm about to go and do this. That's right. like a humble. That's like a humble thing. You saying your thank you, showing your gratitude. You know what you did, and you want to accomplish something else. Self sabotage is like, okay, you did this, but then you start kind of downplaying it. Like, yeah, but oh, well, this person gonna do something better, or like, you know, this ain't nothing. This is so small compared to what other people are doing. Like that's self sabotage. Like the the small stuff matters, and it's so crazy that you asked me to talk about this stuff and how all this stuff is coming full swing because my mom literally was talking to us the other few weeks ago when my mom did a workshop she was talking to us about this she had stopped us in the middle of the workshop and told one of the one of our people panelists speaking certain stuff you have to rephrase and rewrite it because don't try to downplay what you do and it was so crazy because she didn't even notice it because my mom was like yeah you gotta stop like you're a mom you own a business you just applying for your two daughters and you're under the age of 30 mm-hmm. you know and she was just kind of like uh uh-uh, uh you know did it and my mom was like no don't downplay it and I feel like even just in general, I feel like a lot of people do this, like downplay everything and don't downplay what you do because what you're doing is holding so much impact and value to how your life is about to play out, you know? Right. Yeah, so, no, I definitely agree. I want to piggyback on what you said, um, like going to the social media aspect, because I've talked about this probably on every single um, episode and talking about like that figmentation of your imagination of what you see online and what you see on other people's or in other people's lives and how that incorporates to you know what how you think of your perception to the real world and so I know a lot of people when they think about social media when they're thinking about things that they see that they want I know like they create this like little fantasy inside of their head like I will do absolutely everything in my power to get that but sometimes that might not be the best decision because be i mean we're speaking about society today people do a lot of crazy stuff and that that's just how it is i mean you know to get what they want to get the i guess you want to call it riches or however you want to get to the top spot there's a lot of crazy stuff that you can do but the honesty of that is the other people that you see doing that the people that you see on social media they you don't know how they got there. You don't know how they got to, you know, that certain position. You don't know how they got to that certain house. You don't know how they got to that certain type of money. Like, because you don't know that is the exact reason why you shouldn't even be fantasizing about, you know, how you can get that also. And so, you know, it's as simple as you said, like the way that social media works with you're literally picking, you know, it's like, it's like a, uh, like you know when you're playing a game like sims or gta or you know all those different games where you can literally customize you know what you're doing that's how social media is you're literally customizing your world for other people to see and 
I'm not gonna lie to y'all, a lot of that is not honest. A lot of stuff that I see on social media as I'm scrolling day to day, that all of it's crap. Like people posting about, you know, things that they got, things that they're doing. They're just posting like what they want you to see. They're not posting the the work that's going into it, whether it be bad or good. They're not posting the, you know, the sacrifices that are being made. And these are for all my honest and good people, too, that are posting real life things that are helping other people. You're not seeing that the work that they're putting in, um, you know, let's say, for example, you know, you're in your 20s and you're a waiter slash waitress and you're working, you know, at a restaurant and you're trying to make a living. But on Instagram, you look like a, you know, a six figure model who's, you know, working for some big company. That's just like, it's so crazy how social media can normalize that nowadays and how people will literally look up to celebrities and people who are, you know, think that they're of higher power and feel like, oh, I can do that too. And then the second point I want to pick back off of is the self sabotage part because a lot of people do that. And I felt I've seen myself. I have self sabotaged myself trying to create this false reality of what I wanted life to be based on what I've seen others do. And I just, it ruined me so much in college. And I've talked about this with everyone on previous episodes and even my close friend circles, like sabotaging yourself for what others or what you see others do and what they believe in, that is so toxic. Like it is one of the worst things you can do because then you're taking away from the reality of who you are and you're living in this, you know, visual fantasy of what could be. And that's why I talk about, you know, a lot of like having an identity crisis because it's like, you're not living in your true form. You're living in this fake version of who you think you are trying to please, you know, others and trying to like validate them for whatever opinion. So that that definitely resonated with me too. And I feel like in terms of still keep it in like all this stuff falls under self-love because regardless self i feel like if i had to define self-love in my own words it's being an unapologetically yourself mm-hmm. there we go and like there's you don't and it's one of those things where like you don't feel as if you're like a shadow version of yourself when when you self-love you are just 100 percent authentic in who you are it's not a word but i had there was a shirt i had in middle school i would never forget and it said imperfectious on there and i live by that because being yourself is you like being imperfect you're just an imperfect version of yourself which is fine because there's no such thing as perfect so my soul be imperfect with a little pizzazz so i 100 percent like all this stuff falls under self-love because these kind of force all these like little standards that we have for ourselves all these social medias all this self-sabotage all this are like ways to get people outside of themselves and I feel like that's what people get so unhappy is because in the long run, it does get so exhausted having to constantly put on the facade. Like, you get exhausted because you'll catch yourself slipping up and you're like, dang, did somebody notice it? Did somebody peep this? Because you catch yourself hiding versions of yourself that you don't want people to see. Like, obviously, I get there's moments where you don't want to let all your little, wild, you know, crazy, um, unique versions of yourself out and let all, everybody see. But at the same time, you shouldn't have to necessarily keep every like the parts of yourself and who you are and the, the, the things that make you whole a secret you know like you should definitely be able to live your life unap- unapologetically as the next person and I feel like that's how in some instances we as people like I'm not saying everybody I'm not saying it's you or me or whoever it may be but why some people slightly get a little bit resentful or like start to treat other people a certain way when they see people just living them like themselves because yeah. it's so key like a jealousy thing I'm not gonna lie I had it at some point at like earlier points in my life like I'm still growing in my self love journey. I'm not gonna lie, because my friends will know that I still have my insecure moments. I still have these moments where I get down in the dumps, and I'm so upset with myself and doing, you know, the average like you know feeling a little bit belittling and all that other stuff. But when I was younger, I'm still young, but younger by high school, middle school, I had that real bad. I would find myself getting a little bit uneased around people who were able to live who like just found comfortability in themselves and did what they want and I realized like 100 it was wholeheartedly because I wasn't living as I wanted to like I felt myself mutant as mutant parts of myself because I was scared and it's one of those things that at the end of the day yeah you may have a few people that judge you and don't like you but honestly not everybody gonna like you right. like that's just that's just the honest track the honest truth and 100 percent you cannot get everybody's not gonna like you that's just the way the world is that's how it works you can't force everybody to like you and i feel like that's why i spent so long trying to hide myself was because i want everybody to like me but the truth and reality of it is not everybody's gonna like you and 
I feel like once you kind of realize the, I feel like once you kind of realize being around people and life has so many great areas that you understand that everything that's going on, whoever is worried about you, if it's not genuine, you got to learn to kind of let it go. You do because a big part of the big part, a big part of self love too is having a supportive friend group, a supportive family members, all the above. Because when you have your moments where you kind of picking and belittling yourself, they're kind of the ones that help you help pick you back up to be like, come on, like you got this, you got this, this kind of swag about you. You know, take pride in that. You did this, this, this with your life. Take pride in that. Because I've had my fair share, you know, fake friends who hasn't, who will kind of be there belittling me too like girl I'm already telling myself I feel ugly and raggedy and all the above you shouldn't be telling me too like <laughs> dang tell me like you know girl you did this like you you gonna be okay like help me get out the funk don't keep me in there yeah. so again full circle with the self love thing supportive have su- supportive people in your circle be one, one of your biggest fans do that affirmation stuff again as repetitive and cliche as corny as it sounds and as sick as some people may be hearing it that stuff do work in the long run like the way your mind works is like just like how your body is like in general repetition once you tell yourself stuff just like how some liars be telling somebody lies they believe it you can do the same thing with the positive affirmations and stuff like that tell yourself in positive affirmations constantly because eventually you will believe it like you have to say it till you believe it and if you're telling truthful things about yourself yeah you it's easier to believe them so you have to be uplifted spirit and for yourself for the people around you and you have to surround yourself with people that will do the same and go out to bat for you and be there for you when your mind kind of not there for you yeah yeah absolutely and what i love about this topic is that it's not like it's so short in terms of what you can talk about but that's because 99 percent of the reason behind it is the actually doing the work yourself like i think and it's not hard honestly like I I found 100% like inner peace when I stopped caring about what others thought and like stopped, you know, living my life for the validation of others. And I think that's important when you talk about what you're doing for your for your career also is because influence is obviously very important and inspiration is important, but copying and like feeling like you have to follow after people that's just it's just not healthy and I, I don't think you know obviously there are people who you know like oh I want to be like this person I want to you know follow after this person of their inspiration of what they did that's absolutely okay but don't don't try to make yourself an exact copy of someone else because that's obviously not what God did and I think you know if you think about it obviously he made you your own person but you can be influenced by other people. And so, you know, like you said, that self-love starts really with yourself in the small, it starts with the small steps, telling yourself every day that, you know, you are worth it, you are loved, um, you're definitely supported. And if you don't, you know, have anyone that makes you feel like that, then just know that, you know, there's 8 billion people in this world. So you definitely have someone out there that's going to one day, or, you know, you have people that are at least thinking about you um, in general. And I think you have to take a, a small moment to say, like, if you look yourself in the mirror and, you know, you're trying to figure out what's not clicking, 99% of the time, it's your mindset and how you think about self-love and the way you think about, you know, your perception of others. Once you start to really look in the mirror and say, like, I love myself and I'm not going to change for anyone else because obviously I'm not perfect. There's things that still have to, you know, be worked on. There's things that I have to go through. There's journeys and experiences that I still have yet to um, to experience. Then you're like, then I'm fine. But if you're looking in the mirror and saying like, you know, oh, I'm not doing this because of someone else. I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to follow through with this because someone else told me not to. I'm not going to, you know, do this exact thing because someone said it's not cool or Who cares? Honestly, who cares? A lot of my life has been based on, um, you know, trying to prove other people's validation, trying to please others. Um, This is something that, you know, Tyler, you've seen personally through college is that, you know, I did that constantly, always feeling like I had to live through other people. And once I changed that, I started to really like figure out what I wanted out of life and how I wanted to live my life and kind of live that reflection of myself in the mirror. Everything just started to, to work. Like everything started to click. Um, things started to just, you know, follow through naturally. Um, I started to just be happy with everything that I was doing and telling myself like the small stuff, you know, all that matters. Like even the smallest change, if I'm like, 
you know what? Working out is not my thing, but you know, I ran two miles today. Like I will still give myself a pat on the back because it ain't it ain't easy. Not everybody is, you know. I not everybody is on that journey. So if you, you know, if you have that small little progress and you tell yourself like I did at least this today or I did this this week or I even, you know, made this change this month to better myself mentally, spiritually and emotionally, I think that that counts as a win for everybody. It definitely does. And I everybody's journey, everybody's idea is going to be different, perception is going to be different. So you that's one of those things where like i guess that's the beauty in it because we all could go through similar things but we will approach it differently we will handle it differently it will come at us differently but i feel like that's the beautiful thing about it all because again cliche moment but i forgot i don't know who said it but i know we probably all have heard it one point in time but there's only one you in this world so why not be you because if you're trying to be like somebody else why be like that person if they already exist in this world go be yourself add a little pizzazz a little flurry, a little you to the world it's not gonna hurt nobody i promise you it's not gonna hurt nobody and if it do they not your friend and support system to begin with yeah you got you gotta have people who are confident and so people who feel like you know you're worth the worth the time and the journey obviously and people who gonna tell you straight up like you need to tighten up when you need to like there that's really the that's really the test of loyalty and of faith in this world is when you have someone that can tell you like either you're doing really well or you're bsing and you need to tighten up like that's really i have a lot of people who can do that for me and that's what keeps me humble and a lot of things that i do and helps me grow and also just make sure that you know i'm constantly having a feeling of like i'm doing really good in life and you know i'm not not pressured to do everything at this one time and that i have time to do things and make sure that you know i take my time and things that i do and make sure that i master the things that i'm currently doing because you know obviously it has it's not perfect if you know i'm not at that stage yet so if i need i need to work on it now and make sure that it's you know perfected by the time i get to my career then i love that this is i love that this is such like a big topic though and so commonly talked about because it's so important like it's one of those things like i don't think we realize sometimes we lose like the i i don't know i guess we just don't realize sometimes how much these things kind of play hand in hand like the lack of self-love messes around and affects your mental health and your mental health messes around and next messes with the lack of self-love and then it slowly starts to like manifest itself in different parts of your life and that's when i feel like stuff can become oh so like overwhelming and things like that because literally it's like tri- trial and error cause and effect like it like kind of all works in motion together so i feel like working on one thing can help the other you know because it'll force you to have a new like outlook on certain things new perspectives on certain things it's 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 one of those things where it's like it can be hard at times but it's definitely like eye-opening and kind of not kind of it is worth it because I'm not going to lie. High school was fun. I love all my friends that I have still. And I love all the support that I have. It was very fun. But at the same time, when I look back and think about all the stuff that I was like kind of focused on and how stressed out I was about some of the dumbest stuff, I'm like, dang, like, I will never forget. This is, I told this story a few, I told it a few times. I don't know if I, if I ever told it to you before, but there was one time yeah this is a little more insecure part of my life i had literally had got me a little bobbiana y'all i had a little bobbiana it was a weave and it has to leave a little bobbiana and i literally got to school i don't know why i was so scared about a weave but at the same time if you grew up in arizona as a little black girl you get it but I literally got to school. I didn't even make it to lunch before I was in the bathroom crying, having a panic attack. Like, mom, come pick me up. Please come pick me up. I cannot be here. Because I was like, I was just like, dang, none of my friends is wearing weaves, you know, like nobody at my school really wearing weaves. Everybody got their little natural hair out. And I went to school with a lot of mixed kids. And everybody got their natural little curly wash and go hair out. And I got this sewing. I'm like, I was getting stressed out. 
why I was stressed out now, I couldn't even tell you. But it was just one of those things. I really was so concerned about what all the boys were about to say about my hair, say if a track was showing and stuff like that. But I knew my track wasn't showing because I knew I wasn't going out like that. But, like, it was just the fact that I was so hyper fixated on that before, like, trying to beat somebody else to the punch that I literally gave myself a little mini panic attack in the school bathroom and was crying. And it's just like, and and, yeah, and like, just think about like how small that seems. That held so much weight and affected me so much in that small little time span, which is so crazy. Cause now that will, something like that, I feel like I would never worry about. But like the fact that that resonated so much with me because I was really so worried about, I was really consuming myself with thoughts of what other people, what I thought other people was gonna say and think that I literally gave myself a mini panic attack, which is so crazy to think about. Like I induced my own panic attack because I was so stressed out about what somebody else was going to say or possibly thought of me. And that's just like, it's one, and that's one of those moments where it's really an eye opener. Cause it's like, now I've gotten to the point to where it's like, people are going to think what they want to think about me. I can't control it. The most I can do is live my life. Like, I'm happy now with who I am. I look at myself and I smile. I laugh at myself and I have a time. Four or five years ago, this was not me. Like, I was so tense. I still am very much sensitive. A lot of people that know me, I'm still sensitive. But, like, back then, I was sensitive bad. Like, I would cry about any, everything. Any, everything would stress me out, overwhelm me. Anytime somebody cracked a joke, it would resonate with me. I would hold on to me and think, like, dang, it's something wrong with me. Like, it was bad. Like, when you spend so much time consuming yourself on what everybody going to think about you or what you think everybody going to think about you and assuming the worst, it really take you to a sunken place because you just get stuck in that hole and then you kind of hide yourself to give everybody you just kind of want to be a shadow in people's lives so you give nobody a reason to say anything to you or about you but i was watching a movie yesterday and then he he had said something along the lines like you know you can stay right here or nothing will happen to you but exactly that nothing is going to happen to you and that's very true you hide and kind of try to live your life in the background and outside of yourself you're never going to get to experience your life authentically how you need to experience it and have your own personal experiences because you're going to be too scared to step step out and put yourself out there yeah like part of loving yourself is being so comfortable within yourself where you can just be like you live your life how you would do it you make decisions for you you don't let people manipulate you you literally just be and it's one of those things where it's like if anybody is suffering with like the lack of self-love and like struggling with how to figure it out and how to approach it first and foremost it's trial and error like that's the whole point is you gonna figure it out but you at least gotta take the initiative to do it and try but it's one of those things where it's like once you kind of get there and start figuring it out it really does feel like a like a little bit of weight is lifted off your shoulders because you're not gonna be doing nothing for nobody else but yourself you don't anybody's opinions if you don't want it don't ask for it if they give it to you you don't got to carry it with you brush that off your shoulder you self-love is one of those things that if you don't care for it it eventually kind of starts to eat at you in a little bit because when you get a sense of self and you get and you start to understand self-love and start to practice it a lot more and start to do stuff that will kind of improve your self-love it's a certain sense of happiness that you feel you literally just wake up certain days like dang today gonna be a good day and i feel good like that's what like the self-love starts to play a part in like you just waking up like dang today gonna be a good day I feel like when you kind of get into them sucking head spaces and you get so stuck in your insecurities and get so stuck on all the problems and the badness in the world and the badness of yourself and how people are going to see you, that's when you start waking up like, dang, today going to be a rough one. What, what, what's going to happen today? What am I going to go through today? Dang, you know, like, uh, let me just prepare. Let me just let me just get through the day. So once you get to a point of, like, a sense of self and you just feel comfortable, you wake up like, today going to be a good day. You just wake up like, dang, I'm real happy today. Why am I happy today? Because you woke up yourself, and you was just happy to breathe another day. God gave you another day to breathe, and you was just happy to be here. That's who you are. And it's really like it's just such a happy experience. And then you'll find that like your natural self is what will gravitate good people towards you. If that makes sense. Like once you just yourself, people people like when people one hundred percent they self. They love when they can just get energy from people, and they're just like, oh, you just seem like a fun person. You know, you just so lighthearted. Um, I love that you're yourself. Like, and I'm not gonna lie. What, 
getting that compliment is actually one of the best compliments to ever receive. That's one of my favorite compliments to ever receive is when somebody's like, I love your personality or I love this about you. Like when they start speaking on your character and your personality and things that describe you, that is just such a heartwarming feeling. It's insane. Like that, that's one of those things where I literally be like, my smile go from like, like, yeah, I already know. People that know me know I got a big old Kool-Aid smile. Those are compliments that will literally have me grinning all day like this. <laughs> like, I be like, eh. Yeah. No, that's, no, I definitely agree. And, you know, one of the most famous lines, like I said earlier, um, is, you know, love yourself or nobody will. Like, that's really a testament to how people live their lives and how people should live their lives. Because if you don't, then you can't expect you know love to come from anywhere else if you don't have it within so i'll just leave everyone um with that and say at the end of the day you have to be you know your own cheerleader um it's okay to have you know bad days it's okay to have moments where you're like you know the bad days will come with the good ones just let the good ones resonate more than the bad ones yeah, you know, feel like you, you know, may have not done something right or feel like you have anxiety about something or even feel like you're just not having a good day at all. You know, just take a step back, relax, um, maybe do some type of um, coping mechanism that, you know, gets you in that peaceful place, whether it be music or reading a book or going outside and um, taking, you know, fresh air. Or, Ooh, yes, or outside is a big one, y'all. Soak up that sun, that vitamin D. Like, I'm being so for real. The sun really does improve your mood. Like, yes, it can be hot, but, like, open the blinds up. Let the sun in a little bit. Like, that does wonders. I love the sun. <laughs> yeah. Get those get those endorphins up. But definitely um, be confident to have, you know, self-love within. Because in a world that we live in that's so full of hate and cruelty, I think just loving yourself has to be the key to um to inner peace and I like I said I'm a personal testimony of that so yeah, that you'd be surprised by how much like what self love does like the like your like how it opens your like your love like this love itself like how much it opens up to even how you project it to other people like when you you know, just comfortable and confident in yourself and just trusting your instincts and what you can, what you're capable of and what you can bring to the table and just who you are as a person. The way you will connect with people and love with, and like just kind of get to know other people is actually kind of crazy. Like it just kind of opens you up and, and people who are drawn to you and uh, opens up a lot of like connections and in a good way. Like you can see a lot of the good parts of people when you let other people see the good parts of yourself and don't hide them. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. To help y'all, I'm not gonna cap. My mom got me this book called Dr. Seuss Seussisms, and it's just like literally a whole bunch of different variations of Dr. Seuss like phrases from the different books. And I read them every now and again. I keep them in Hampton because I'll keep them on my desk and I read them every now and again. And me and my friends been play like we playfully read them, but like when you really read those, it's literally just called Dr. Seuss Seussisms. If y'all want to look up the book, and them little quotes like Dr. Seuss, although he was a goofball and his little stuff was a little crazy, and I know rumor has it he was racist. He was- Words, some of those phrases, they really bring on to life. And also, no, I'm at this big age, but y'all listen to SpongeBob. I'm for real. Y'all gotta look at SpongeBob. SpongeBob was a hundred percent. That boy was so excited to just be a fry cook and live in a pineapple. And yeah. we be talking about some of the craziest stuff. And I eat it is just a show, but like that to me, stuff like that when you look at it, like generally, it puts into perspective, like. Much Bob and Patrick did whatever the heck they want, and they were so happy just them being two peas in the pod. And I feel like that's how we should look at life. Life gonna have its serious moments. It's gonna be serious regardless. The least we could do is make some lighthearted parts about it and just laugh and have fun. No, absolutely. And for all my folks, treasure your life, man. Treasure your life. That's what I uh, I had to learn that hard lesson um, in a lot of different areas because I didn't treasure my life at one point and it cost me a lot of, um, cost me a lot of mental trauma and just, you know, disappointment in my life because I didn't treasure who I was as a person. So once you make yourself feel like gold, then the world is going to feel like your oyster. So definitely do that. And, um, you know, this is an important topic. Make sure to, um, every day you wake up, you look yourself in the mirror, Tell yourself three things. So what I used to do in high school. Tell yourself that you are enough, that you 
have the power and capability to do anything but your mind to and that you love yourself once you do that the world is yours but so love yourself people love others love the world love what you're doing love your career love your family and most importantly love god because we all wouldn't be here without him so thank you all and we'll see you on the next episode